Happy New Year. The Christian year begins today with the first Sunday of Advent. In the church, we mark time a little bit differently than the Julian calendar we usually use. The first Sunday of Advent is always the start of a brand new year, marking another period of waiting, expecting, and searching for the arrival of Jesus Christ Advent simultaneously looks backward toward his birth in Bethlehem and forward to his return at the end of history. And so we gather on the first day of this new Christian year to bring our lives closer to God's life and we, as we await for Jesus' return, whether that return comes in five minutes, five years, or 500 centuries. Whatever path you travel to arrive in this moment, it's not coincidence. Whether this is your first time here, your 500th, God's Spirit has brought you to this place, and it is always a joy to worship together. Welcome to worship with One United Church of Christ. The bulletin that accompanies this service is available online and was sent out in the weekly church email on Wednesday of this week and shared to Facebook. Highlighting a couple of things from the bulletin, it's virtual communion today, so please have your cup and bread product ready for later in the service. Also, as it is the beginning of Advent, we have an Advent devotional available for each day of the season. It can be downloaded, the link is in the bulletin, and also if you would like a hard copy of it, please call the church office, make arrangements to stop by and pick one up. We are inviting you to keep a couple people in your prayers this week. Judy and Joan Menser have both been ill, and Joan is in the hospital, and they have asked for our prayers, and certainly we are holding them in prayer. And many thanks for everyone who has sent cards, who has offered condolences, who's been keeping my family in prayer. We lost my stepmother, Gail, last week, and her service of celebrating her life was about a week ago. And on behalf of the whole Powell family, many, many thanks for all the ways that you have been supporting us and showing love and care at this time. It means a lot to all of us. We continue to have a little food pantry out in front of the church. And if you would like to participate in the Christmas cookie exchange, today, November 29th, is the day to turn in what kind of cookies that you will make, either to Katie Sajak or myself. All of these hearts that you see all around the almost 10,000 of them now, remember the people in Pennsylvania who have died because of COVID-19. Friends, these hearts are overwhelming in person. And as our case counts continue to rise all across the country, it's bad right now. Please do what you need to do to keep yourself and others safe. That includes refraining from spending time indoors in a place that's not where you usually live. Sadly, that includes restaurants and shopping. Pickup options are available so that you can support your favorite businesses, and supporting them is important. Also, due to the change in the Pennsylvania Department of Health advisories, I have to quarantine until I can get a negative COVID test because I was out of state for my stepmother's funeral. Our testing capacity here in Berks County is poor for travelers. And so, out of an abundance of caution, we will not be having outdoor worship today, November 29th. Likewise, today's service looks a little bit differently because Jeff and I have recorded this service separately. These are weird times and we all have to adapt. So please keep doing the things that you need to do to keep yourself and others safe and please keep praying. Finally, a huge thank you for all the ways that you are supporting the ministry of this congregation. Thank you for sending in your financial contributions. Most of all, thank you for the ways that you are embodying God's love in this time and in our community. Jesus needs more people like you. Thank you. And so taking a breath, may we center ourselves on God and let us worship today in the name of God, the creator, Christ, the savior, and the Holy Spirit, the redeemer. Amen.
As we begin this season of Advent, we include one of the cherished traditions of Advent, the Advent wreath. This first Advent candle shines brightly in hope, with hope, and for hope. While we long for the world to be better, we hope for change without disruption to our comfort. God promises us a vibrant future, yet calls us to join actively in the work of creating it. Recognizing our hesitancy to become involved, acknowledging our apathy, may we pray. Oh, that you, Holy One, would tear our hearts open and come down, that you would tear our lives open and expose all that decays our hope. We see enormous systemic changes, institutionalized racism, persistent bias, unequal access to life-giving resources, and we struggle with our response. We might work toward a more just future, but the energy required to change entrenched hearts, lives, and patterns decays our hope. We might dwell in places of privilege where discrimination and bias are unseen and the learning needed to have a sight decays our hope. We might ignore the challenges, preferring to stay in safe spaces of apathy, yet that very apathy toward injustice decays all creation's hope. At this time, as you are praying, you might wish to name quietly to God all the forces and factors that decay your hope. And together may we pray. Holy God Almighty, when our hope has burned out and as despair sets in, we ask forgiveness for when we lean into cynicism and bitterness. When our hope has yet to be sparked, even more we ask forgiveness for our apathy and the consequences of our indifference. Wake us up, O God, to your creation shattering power that shakes mountains, rends the heavens, and demands we respond to your stunning righteousness. Amen. While recognizing that the forces that decay our hope are real and powerful, the God who can rend the heavens is stronger. We are people of this God, and so our hope is never extinguished. As such, we relight the candle of hope, burning steadily and stronger, reminding us that we are Jesus' people, and we always have hope. of God, at the end of all things, we are the work of God's hands. Our creator is constantly shaping and refining us with love and holy grace. We are forgiven our despair and indifference and renewed with fierce divine power. 
For this we can say, thanks be to God. Amen. Once again, will you join me in prayer? Holy One, your love for us became incarnate long ago, bringing life and hope to all the world. In this season of waiting, help us to hear anew how you turn the world upside down by becoming one of us. Help us, we pray, not just to hear, but to know deep in our hearts that your power can still make the world new. Amen. Advent begins with apocalypse, oddly appropriate for this year. Both readings that we'll hear today from Isaiah 64 and Mark 13 point to the ultimate hope of our faith, that God will tear down this world and perfect existence. This Advent, perhaps more than any we've lived through, feels like we can lean and we need to lean heavily into this hope. When we listen to apocalyptic pieces of scripture, we tend to listen for how God is involved in the destruction and the violence. However, today I challenge us to listen for how God is at work in the life after the apocalypse. And so may we hear the Holy One's voice in the prophet Isaiah, the 64th chapter, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God but you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you and your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We all have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet... O oh Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. And our second reading is from Mark chapter 13, verses 24 through 37. Listen to the words of Jesus. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, 
keep awake. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
O oh God, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence, so that the earth would stand still at your glory, so that your people would humble themselves before you. O oh God, please tear the heavens open and come down. Please make the world take notice of you. We are awash in selfishness. Love for neighbor is trumped by love for self. We sacrifice each other on the altar of COVID, demanding life continue on as normal for us, no matter the exposure or the risks for others. We sacrifice schools so that bars can be open. We sacrifice our elders so that we can go shopping. We sacrifice healthcare workers so Christmas shows go on. We sacrifice first responders so we can have our freedoms, while forgetting freedom requires personal discomfort and sacrifice of self to build a better way of life. O oh God, tear open the heavens and come down. Tear open the hearts of the selfish. Tear apart the lives of the greedy and the comfortable. Tear open these stupid, senseless days and make the world shake with the fullness of your righteous glory. Purify our lives with holy fire. Sanitize us with the heat of your spirits burning. If you would make yourself known to your enemies, to all who live for self ahead of you and neighbor, the nations would tremble at your presence. Maybe Isaiah would pray something like this if he were living through Advent 2020. Our scripture reading today from Isaiah 64 is a gorgeous and powerful prayer from our most loved Advent prophet. Isaiah lived through some tumultuous times too, worse than these days, believe it or not, foretelling and witnessing the destruction of his people's hopes and dreams. The section of the book of Isaiah we hear from today is commonly known as Third Isaiah and was prophecy directed to the Hebrew people as they returned home after exile in Babylon. Throughout the decades of displacement, the people of Israel dreamed about returning home, longed for restoration. When they were finally allowed to come back home, they found things were not as glorious as they had hoped. Third, Isaiah was working among a disappointed and frustrated people who were wrestling with hopelessness and their relationship with the Lord, their God. We can relate. Into this sense of disappointment and frustration, Isaiah prays the words that we read. If only God would tear open the heavens and come down to earth. Before God's majesty and might, the mountains would quake and fire would blaze through the land. If only the Lord would reveal God's self to God's enemies, then, then the nations would be afraid. In the past, when God had done this, torn open the heavens, come down to earth, revealed God's self to God's enemies, the Holy One accomplished wonders beyond expectations. From ancient times, the world has not known any God who acts on behalf of those who love them except our God. The Lord looks after those who love God who do right. But when we sin, the Almighty grows angry, turning from us. We become like the unclean, withering like a leaf lost in the wind. Isaiah pleads, reminding the Holy One that God is our father, our parent. We are God's clay. The Holy One is the potter shaping and reworking our lives. For this reason, because we are God's children, formed in God's image and tended to by God's own hands, Isaiah pleads for the Lord to forgive us, to turn toward us, and to look upon us once more. Isaiah 64 is a beautiful prayer. A prayer for people not in control of their lives, which is us right now, isn't it? This prayer affirms that God is wildly powerful, carefully watching humanity, ready to let us feel the consequences of our sin, ready to affirm us when we do right, 
and in all circumstances, ready to forgive us when we inevitably fail and ready to reshape as a potter does the clay. When reading Isaiah 64, as much as we hear about God's anger when we sin and God's turning away from humanity, we have to remember this season that we're in, anticipating God's entrance into humanity as the very same mortal clay that we are. Yes, God is upset when we sin, when we live for self ahead of all else. And yes, God is too loving and too gracious to freeze us out and to hand us over to sin forever. Isaiah 64 is a prayer of surrender, asking God's power, creativity, and love to take our lives and reshape them. God is the potter, we are the clay, a common refrain all over scripture. God is in control, not us, no matter how much we think we are or want to be. Yet for every twist in the story of our lives, for every change in plot, for every broken dream, broken plan, broken heart, God takes up the pieces and reworks them into something glorious, different, than what we imagined, but more beautiful and majestic than anything we could have fashioned on our own. Beloved in Christ, God is holding each and every one of us, loving us as a good parent does, and reshaping us with joy and imagination as a good potter does. The bad news that 2020 has drilled into us is we are not in control of our lives. The good news is that God is, and nothing in all creation, neither life nor death, neither angels nor rulers, neither things present nor things to come, neither powers nor height nor depth, nor unfulfilled dreams nor broken plans nor COVID nor anything else in all creation can separate us from the love of God that we find in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the good news that brings us hope throughout this Advent season and beyond. May God tear open the heavens, tear open our hearts, reshape the world and us into something more healthy, more whole, and more glorious. Come, Lord Jesus, please come quickly, and please come soon. Amen. Keep silence and with fear on trembling stand under nothing earthly minded for with blessing in the hand Christ our God to If you have not already found your bread product and your cup, we invite you to do so now. Whatever you have on hand is fine, leftovers from Thanksgiving. If you have water, grape juice, wine, Kool-Aid, whatever you have is wonderful. 
Jesus used whatever he had on hand, and so too do we. Here at this table, at this first Sunday of Advent, we remember hope is a dangerous thing. With hope, we believe life can change and good can be worked from the worst circumstances. Hope is born from God because the Holy One's two great specialties are change and redemption. At this table, we receive hope made tangible in the form of a meal and a story and a virtual community. In the bread and the cup, we hear how the worst of Jesus' life brought forth the best of God. In sharing this moment, we join with others searching for Christ, and we look together for his salvation and his grace. Through remembering new life comes from struggle and death, through being connected in sacred community, we receive hope. For everyone who is searching for some hope, some good news, some holy presence, know that you are welcome here. Come to this table, for Christ invites us and bids us to join him. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God most high. It is right and a good and joyful thing, most holy God, to give you thanks and praise. You are the one who gives hope to your people always. In the wildernesses of our world, you journey with us and call us to make a way for your salvation. The fragility of our lives is held within the strength of your being. Your word gives us courage to lift up our voices with strength as we cry out for the day when you return to make all things new. You promised to come with might, and so you arrived, God, with us, Emmanuel. In a vulnerable child, you appeared in power to show us strength requires grace and justice demands forgiveness. You sought to bring all peoples and nations together within your life-giving love. Through your outspread arms, you created a new path for reconciliation, holding us close to your heart on the cross and beyond. As a parent teaches a child the language of living, so you teach us the language of prayer as we join our voices speaking our hope in you, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Whenever we gather at this table, we remember the story of the last night of Jesus' life. While he was gathered, sharing a meal with his disciples, his friends, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to them and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this as often as you eat it to remember me. And in the same fashion, after supper, he took a cup and blessed it and gave it to them and said, this cup is a cup of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. Will you join me in prayer? Come, Holy Spirit, come. Break into this moment, cross through our senses so that we sense your transformative power. Bless this bread and cup, we pray, and make them be for us the living Christ among us. Bless this virtual community gathered in your name so that we may live Christ in our world. We pray to be made more than we are now for your glory and for the good of the world you love. Amen. And finding your bread product, we remember that this is the body of Christ, broken in love for all of us. Take and eat. holding your cup, know 
that this is the cup of salvation shed in love for all of us. Take and drink. Will you join me in prayer? Holy One, we thank you for meeting us at this table and providing for us as we continue to journey after you. Help us to follow your light, even through places of despair and brokenness. For salvation without struggle isn't truly salvation. Hold us in the strength of your presence so that we may bring hope into every corner of the world. Amen. Go forth and begin the journey of Advent. Begin your preparations. Start the planning. Look to the future, marking and keeping time in hopeful expectation of the salvation, the peace, the justice that God will one day bring to the earth. And as you prepare to go forth, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the hope of the Holy Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Amen.